Welcome to Connection. Connection, a talk show where we get to introduce you to inspiring individuals who want to share with you their passions, but as well a message. About Connection, if you are new to the channel, remember to subscribe and turn on the notification. Like this, you know, each time a new Connection is out, you know it first. Today in Connection, I'm glad to introduce you to Paul Delmas. Paul has over 30 years of experience as an executive within one of the biggest company, a food and drug retailer in Canada, a 50 billion company of sales, the Loblo Company Limited. After serving within the Loblo Company Limited, Paul decided to retire and went on his journey as an executive coach. After going back to school, he received his accreditation as an executive coach and has over 350 hours of coaching for his previous employers. Please welcome Paul Delmas. Hi, how are Hi. you, Polidis? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Very and well, thank you. Uh, we see it's quite it's quite shiny where you are now in in Canada. Yes, I'm in uh, Toronto. I'm actually in a suburb of Toronto called Oakville, Ontario. So, okay, and it's, and it's nice and sunny today. <laughs> that's great. That, that that's great because it helps to make the day as well. Yes, it and does, <laughs> and it's getting warmer too, which is really important. Yeah, and you do when you do your when you do your your workout. Do you? go outside sometimes or at the moment is more at home? Um, fortunately, I have a gym. We have a gym in the basement. So most of my workouts are in the basement in our gym. But I do do one exercise outside uh, a couple times a week. So mm -hmm. it's nice to get outside as well and exercise. Yes, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great value added. And, and Paul, actually, tell us more about yourself, your background. And what did you choose to become a consultant as an executive coach? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I, uh, I first, when I graduated university, I, I spent five years in public accounting and then I joined uh, Loblaw Companies um, in 1988 and I joined in the finance uh, area of the business. Uh, eventually, I became a CFO of uh, our Atlantic Canada business and, and uh, myself and our family, we moved to uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, where Raman Sharma uh, went to school. So, um, and uh, spent 14 years there. Uh, I was uh, fortunate I, I, during half of that time, I got asked to uh, move into merchandising. So I, uh, learned category management and, and uh, was uh, responsible for what we call about our center store category. So grocery, frozen dairy, health and beauty. And I did that up until uh, 2007. And then at that time I got asked to move back to Toronto and became vice president of Pricey Analytics. And then I did that for a couple of years and I, and I managed our sales and promotional programs. So all the flyers that we have as a grocery retailer across Canada. So there's over a thousand grocery stores that um, Lobla has. So we're managing the promotional program. And then uh, I took on uh, space planning, which is uh, where does our product go on the shelf and all our, what we call our planograms. So it's, and I uh, did that for the last you know, sort of six or seven years. And um, during that time, we, we did a huge uh, system conversion and we went on to SAP, which is you know, the largest enterprise-wide software in the world. And that's a huge journey. It was a billion dollar expense. And uh, so with that, my role uh, reported under supply chain. So I reported under supply chain for the last six or seven years of our business. And, uh, and then when I was getting ready to retire, I had been um, 
I had been coaching a couple of people, sort of a little more like mentorship, and I was really enjoying that. And I was really, you know, getting this deeper connection with, you know, these people that I was working with. And I could see, you know, certain results that were these individuals are being able to achieve. Um, and I was really, you know, um, really feeling that it was benefiting me as well. And I was getting a lot out of these relationships. So when I worked through my retirement, I said I'd like to continue to um, consult. And uh, that was agreed to. And I said, I, one area I would really like to do is to coach because I felt there was a bit of a void in grooming future leaders in the business. So uh, that was, uh, that was a thought, thought was a really good idea. And so I, I do a couple of things with uh, my former employer. I, I um, am an executive coach now. I facilitate um, a leadership workshop as well as um, I do some work on diversity and inclusion um, within the supply chain umbrella. So, um, so yeah, so that's why I, I uh, sort of came into coaching. As you mentioned, um, you know, I was coaching, but I thought I should get um, better discipline and, and more knowledge about the field. So I, as, I, as you said, I did go back to school and I became a certified executive coach. And actually, Paul, what would be the difference between uh, coaching and mentoring? Um, coaching, so mentor, mentorship is, is a lot about the men, mentor, uh, not so much about, it, it's, it's sort of uh, uh, the mentee, you're sort of, as a mentor, you're sure telling the mentee, based on my prior experience, I think you should do this. Um, or you're giving advice and coaching is really different. Um, there's really two types of coaching and coaching, um, if you look at it is there's sort of like directional coaching, coaching. If you think of a sports coach, like a European football or basketball coach in Canada, a hockey coach, um, they're giving very much direction to their players. They're saying, you know, this is the strategy we should use in the game. This is, um, you know, we watch game tape and this is where, you know, you could have performed differently or done some different techniques. You know, they're coming up with practice plans. So it's very directional. You're, you're, you're telling people what to do. Um, the coaching that I would do as an executive coach under the International Coaching Federation is very non-directional. So it's, a, it's really about you know, being a thought partner with the coachee and uh, you know, using a lot of open-ended questions. You know, you're really trying to promote self-discovery on behalf of the coachee. It's always, you know, it's very collaborative. It's very future focused. And, and it's really about trying to have a conversation in which the coachee is really, um, not really is bringing the agenda of what they want to cover. So it's not, there's no one other, no other agenda other than the coaches and every conversation you're really trying to see that, you know, you're getting some sort of result that there's some sort of forward movement on whatever topic the coachee wants to talk about. Um, so it, it's very results driven. So, um, and uh, results focused. So I really like that.
So we could say to, to sum up that uh, mentoring, you are given a direction to the person you're mentoring, but when you are coaching, um, you adapt yourself based on, on what the, the journey of the person is. And you, yes. you, don't give, you don't give pre answered you don't make the answers for the person you're coaching. Yeah, and when you're coaching someone in the, you know, under, as an executive coach, you're certainly not telling them what to do. You're, you're, you're trying to you know, go on the journey with them so they can make their own decision and that they can clarify their thoughts and decide what is best for them on what path they should take going forward. Mm -hmm. And what would be a, your philosophy of coaching? Um, well, the philosophy for me is that, you know, everyone has all sorts of gifts and talents and everyone has all sorts of unlimited potential. And it's really helping uh, the coachee to explore their thoughts, their habits, um, you know, what are the routines that may not serve them well at some point. And, you know, what is some new ins, trying to help them get some new insight so that they can change some of their behaviors and get different results. And um, I would say, you know, I, I really feel like I'm uh, like a very appreciative coach in the sense of um, I, I offer a lot of appreciation, recognition, feedback, uh, but also I also, when I see patterns or trends or um, in, in what I'm seeing in the coaching, I can offer, you know, what I would consider to be constructive feedback. So I, I really try to, you know, keep it honest. One of my mentor coaches has a really good line. He says, um, if someone has broccoli in their teeth, you have to tell them. And so I really try to make sure that I, you know, I have to be courageous when I coach and, and give people feedback. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. And, and uh, as, a, as a coach, um, what strengths do you bring to your coaching practice? Okay. Well, I think, I think I bring a few strengths. Um, certainly being a, a long-term executive and working for a large company you see a lot of situations over those years. Um, so I feel like I have a, a wealth of experience of typical leadership issues that people would have to go through in their career. Some of the challenges, um, the dynamics of working with lots of departments, um, leading large teams, um, even leading small teams for that matter. Um, so I feel like I've seen a lot. Um, and I really feel, um, I really feel that um, that I I really feel that I can see the potential in others, and even when they can't see it in, in themselves, and uh, and I really try to draw that out, and I, I feel like I I you know really try to promote people to be you know kind to themselves, and gentle to themselves, and. You know, it's always about being, you know, trying to hopefully create forward movement for the coachees. So those are some of the strengths I, th I think I believe I bring to my coaching practice. And could you give us some example uh, of a situation you have uh, coached? Sure. Um, you know, I was coaching a couple of people the last couple of weeks just on COVID in the sense of, they're at home and trying to manage a lot of balls in the air. They have children at home. They have big jobs. Um, they're just trying to find this, some sort of work-life balance. And, and so, you know, that was a topic lately. You could have topics like, you know, someone has to have a courageous conversation with a colleague. Um, uh, they could be doing a presentation and they have some anxiety or they're not feeling confident. There's, you know, they're trying to get more engagement in their team. There's lots of uh, topics that come up. And uh, I feel, you know, 
with the training that I received, um, you know, I feel like most topics I feel very comfortable and I don't have to, don't, I don't have to be coaching a retailer. I'd be coaching anyone um, in any business, um, feel quite comfortable covering that. And, um, you know, we all get stuck on something. We all have a little voice telling us that, you know, we should fear something or we should have anxiety. And so at the end of the day, a lot of the topics are kind of the same. And um, so I feel very comfortable uh, covering a variety of topics. And talking about uh, COVID, how are you impacted? Um, did you change or add any of your routine? Um, so we, so in Canada, most, uh, most everywhere is locked down. So you're only supposed to be, only essential services are off operating. So obviously hospitals, you know, grocery stores, um, for example, um, you know, there's, uh, there's a requirement that everyone essentially social distance and stay in their home and that they only go out for basic necessities. Um, you know, you can walk on the sidewalk or walk in, on the street, but you know, all the parks are restricted, um, playgrounds, all the schools are closed. Um, they've switched to online learning. Um, so as far as uh, my wife and I and our youngest son, our youngest son is still working. So he, he works in an essential service and our eldest is married and he and his wife um, live in Midtown Toronto and they're working from home. So my wife and I are kind of working from home. Um, uh, and we're not as busy as we're like to be. Um, I have a mother that lives in Toronto and she's in a retirement residence and she's locked, um, locked in her room essentially. And all her meals are brought to her room and, uh, and temperatures checked uh, once or twice a day. And they're extremely strict, uh, which is actually a, a real blessing because many of the residences in uh, where we live in, in Canada, many of the residences, like I would say one in five have had cases and a lot of deaths. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm very grateful that my mother is in a residence that's uh, being uh, so well taken care of for, even though it's extremely hard. So um, we f I phone her every day and, and uh, help her, help, you know, talk to her. Of course. Um, I was going to ask you, yes, do, do you get to connect with her? Or yeah, you, well, she, she, she doesn't have any access to technology, unfortunately. Um, uh, she turns 90 in, in, in two weeks. Wow. So, so <laughs> we're going to set up a Zoom call for that. Um, awesome. But, but uh, talk to her every day. So um, I'd say that's, you know, it's more of an inconvenience right now um, for us, just like everyone. Um, and well, I think that the way I'm getting through it is, is primarily really focusing on my workouts and nutrition and uh, really trying to uh, be disciplined there. I'm generally pretty disciplined on that, but even more so um, trying to uh, make sure that I, I work out seven times a week and and eat well and and really the key for me on eating well is is really having a lunch that's a salad because just that's how i help um make sure that i eat nutritiously nutritiously as well as control the calorie count so yeah i um you know i i do tr i do journal and i meditate and and those are sort of the early morning routines when I'm you know, performing at my best, I, I do that. But the workout for me is, is the most important thing, uh, especially right now. Yes, I, I believe as well that having a morning routine um, and having it built before the lockdown, before COVID, it's actually really um, uh, a strength and a positive impact for maintaining us to to have clarity and and to to make us start our day in a positive note 
I, I really believe in, in, in the power of having a morning routine and, and especially these days to anchor ourselves and, uh, and remain, remain focused. No question in morning routine. It, it, it sets you up for, for, to have your best day for sure. And, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily say that I've had some bad habits because there's right now there's a little bit of a gift of time. And when you have too much time, it actually can work against you. At least it does for me sometimes. And I find I'm reading the newspaper or, you know, checking the stock market or, or doing all that type of stuff way too much. So, um, uh, more and more I just realize that you need to have more purpose in life, and more focus and, um, and, uh, yeah. So uh, like everyone else, I'll be happy when the COVID subsides. Yeah, of course. And at the same time, it's great that you are already aware of the habits you should get rid of because by being aware of it, you're already halfway through mm -hmm. to, to, to yeah. reduce the, you, you know, once you're aware of it, the action steps you can take, uh, for example, to reduce your time, your time spent on this type of uh, task. Yeah, yeah. And, no, exactly. And as well, like uh, adding to, um, to Jordan, journaling, meditation, is there any other practice uh, you would like to share with us which you find useful on this time? Um, well, I mean, just having um, really trying to focus on, on just being a better person and, and so reading and self-improvement, um, those are the biggest areas that I feel um, add value. You know, if you're going to go to watch Netflix, to watch a documentary as opposed to, you know, been watching, you know, entertainment and things like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that's about it for me right now. I think the morning routine is critical. Um, uh, knowing your body and, and knowing how your body responds to different foods is also really helpful for me because I know when I cut out sugar and you know, um, simple carbs, how my body responds to that. So been trying to be extra diligent during this time around my nutrition. And yes, indeed, having mean, uh, with the nutrition part, is, it, it does play a role uh, within our energy level and our mood. So, so to, especially these days, is indeed it's important to 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 take care of our diet and eating processed, non-processed food, um, which uh, which play an important role, which we have a tendency sometimes to underestimate in uh, in our mood and and energy level mm -hmm. and paul for as as a as an executive coach um if i'm a business and i would like to get in touch with you to get to know better how you work and to help my business how do i get in touch with you uh there's two there's two ways um you can reach reach out to me on my at my email address which is paul dot delmas at bell dot net or i am on linkedin i uh, i never really had a, a reason to be on linkedin before but so i'm slowly uh adding that to my repertoire of social media uh but uh, you can reach me on linkedin as well at paul delmas excellent thank you thank you so much uh, paul um, as well, like I want to make notice like your um, humility and how humble you are. Um, and thank you for sharing your, your career path with us. And I'm as well very impressed by like, you know, the way you, you decided after retiring that it was not over for you and you wanted to continue. And uh, this, despite the age you went back to school and you made your way to something you wanted to do really um and so so this is really inspiring because 
for some of us, uh, the, the message is like, we, there is no age to go back to school. And uh, you, if you want to, you can go and do your passion. Um, so thank you for reminding us this, Paul. Thank you. You're most welcome. And, um, and yes, thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And so connection, you know, as well. So uh, for everyone, connection, you know, support the foundation, gift a dream. Usually gift a dream foundation is there to provide education in countries like in India and Kenya. However, now the time has changed. The the priority has become food. That's why the Gift to Dream Foundation launched the movement of food parcel. For $2 a day, you can feed a family of five. So please, help us, the Gift to Dream Foundation, but above all, help them. Make a donation today. This was your connection. If you start to like it, please subscribe and turn on the notification like this, you know, when the next one is out, the first one. Thank you. See you next time.